go. Thanks so much for doing this show. I'm so pumped. Honestly, so pumped about this. No problem. It's going to be really fun. Awesome. I'm really excited. And I, yeah, I really I love, so. I really love your page. I'm really um, inspired by the work you're doing as well. And I think um, giving a voice to specific forms of, you know, mental, um, and they're not disorders, but kind of like, cause I, I, I had issues with anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder in the past. That's what got me into this sort of stuff, but they're not necessarily just different ways of looking at the world. You know, um, I think giving a voice to that's um, awesome, like really, really cool. So um, I love the work you're doing and I'm really excited to have a chat to you, Michelle. Awesome. That sounds great. Well, the way I run the show is super candid. So I literally just introduce you um, on the show and, um, and then we just kind of go from there. We'll just riff back and forward and see where the, uh, see where the universe takes us. Okay. Sounds cool good. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, today for me and tonight for you. Yes. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank awesome. you so much. Cool. Well, do you want to give the listeners, I suppose, just um, a brief uh, introduction to who you are and um, how you're finding the time at, at the moment and yeah, just how, how things are for you? Well, okay. So hello. Very nice <laughs> to meet everyone. I'm Michelle Hammer. Um, I have schizophrenia and I started the business Schizophrenic NYC mental health clothing brand to just raise awareness for schizophrenia, especially the schizophrenic or mentally ill homeless of New York City. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea is to just spark a conversation about mental health because the more we talk about it, the less stigma there will be, especially when in New York City, one in five individuals has some sort of mental illness. So let's just start talking about it. Nice. Yeah. So cool. So cool. And I find that even just putting words to feelings and words to experience uh, helps us understand the feelings and the experience, which, um, as you say, um, helps with the disorder itself. So it's, so it's such good work you're doing. When did you start wanting to, because um, obviously you were diagnosed yourself, and I'm really excited to get back, get into that. But when did it start to become more, um, more than yourself? You mean like to become like a business of sorts? Yeah. Like when did yeah. that start? Well, you know, living in New York City, those those like nine to six jobs are sort of hard for a person with schizophrenia. And I just wasn't loving it time and time again, just all at all different kinds of jobs. And <laughs> I just wanted to start my own business. I was thinking of things that it could be. And more than that, I really couldn't, it just bothered me so much that I had this like big secret that you can't tell anyone. Totally. And it was just kind of like, why can't I tell people? Why is it such a secret? If people like me before I tell them, and then they dislike me after I tell them, then they're not a real friend. So what could I do in the biggest way possible <laughs> to tell everyone I know and the world that I had schizophrenia yeah. and start a business at the same time? So it was kind of That's like, awesome. hmm, I think I think I could do something here. <laughs> Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, you just went for it. And I think, um, you know, I think um, above all, you know, disorders, what, what, you know, mental ill health, um, there's so much confusion around schizophrenia. And I think that confusion uh, augments the stigma, you know, um, which is really, really shit out. So I think um, for everyone now, could you uh, break down the, uh, the, the confusion for us and, and talk us through schizophrenia? So break about the stigma is it? Absolutely, doing? please do. Yes. Well, I think I think that that what people believe usually they have that kind of misbelief that a person with schizophrenia is constantly just very dangerous. They're they're scary. They're going to be yelling at people who aren't there, mm -hmm. and that they're going to hurt people. Okay, but that could be true of anyone. Anyone can be scary, and anyone so can hurt people. Yeah. The, is a lot of people with schizophrenia you wouldn't know have schizophrenia because they're not going to tell you because they're going to be afraid you're going to associate them with that mm. somebody with mm. schizophrenia can be you know medicated or not or not medicated but just you know moderated in some way or just managed just well managed to be able to live a somewhat normal life there's people that kind of it's really more of a spectrum of how you can live mm. and just like anything else there could be some more severe cases and there could be some more less severe or just maybe just things that are harder. I mean, like when I was younger, 
I had had a lot more symptoms than I have now, but that's also a lot of therapy, a lot of med changes and things like that. So really, I think that the biggest stigma is that people think people with schizophrenia are dangerous when that is completely untrue. A person with a mental illness is actually more likely to be a victim of violence than to actually be the perpetrator of violence. Mm. Nobody mm. knows that. A lot of times because really in society, you know, crisis in mental illness is public when wellness in mental illness is private. Mm. Because who tells the story of like, here's the great one. Here's all yeah. schizophrenia and they're great. You might hear that like, you know, one in a hundred, except you might hear the news, oh, a person with schizophrenia, they did this. Or you hear in the TV show, oh, they had a mental illness and they killed, you, just, you know. It's what society does when you watch movies and TV shows and killers and things like that. So, I mean, it was what it is. Yes. But that's what I can say. Yes, it's so true though. Like the, we have, um, you know, society the media there's this real uh kind of clickbait movement going on at the moment that sensationalism idea and you're so right when you say that um there's all these there are all these um you know uh what's the word i'm looking for here colorations where it's kind of like oh they did this and then it's linked therefore to this so it's like well maybe they did that for a multitude of other reasons it might not be the schizophrenia it might not be the anxiety it might not be the depression you know but they're just such big words that are just centered around these, you know, I would almost say shame as well and confusion that people just love to throw them in there. They, they do. And sometimes they'll throw around those words to try to get people out of trouble. Like, oh, mm. no, they had no control. They have this illness. They can't take care of themselves. Yeah. And then you hear people using those things as a, you know, a crutch or just a way to get out of trouble. And then, you know, there goes the stigma again. That's why they did it. Then for if they did it because they have schizophrenia. That means all people with schizophrenia are capable of doing that. No, it yeah. just means everybody's capable of doing that. Just like anyone would be ever of all time. Anyone's yes. capable of doing anything just like anyone else would. Yes. Yes. So we'll see. That's a great point too, as well. Like relying on the label and, you know, using the label as a justification to behave in certain ways is the other side. And I think that's an equally important point. Um, Michelle, talk us through your experience. So what was it like growing up? Um, when did you find out that you had schizophrenia and what, what is living with schizophrenia like? Okay. Well, well, growing growing up with schizophrenia is kind of it's it's interesting. You know, high school is not easy yeah. ever for a person, but being schizophrenic in high school and not knowing it is even worse because I was so paranoid. I thought everyone hated me, mm. which therefore just gave me just a horrible existence. I thought that my mother, who noticed all these like you know symptoms, was constantly trying to help me, but I always thought she was trying to hurt me. So I I wow. would just all these paranoid thoughts about her I, I i thought like just just horrible things and then i go to college i feel like this is where i can finally be free of her i'm free and for a while everything is fine for like a few months and then all of a sudden those paranoid thoughts that i had about my mom i was thinking the exact same things about my current roommate my best wow. friend and all of a sudden it was like a snap in my head like oh my god she was right the whole time all those doctors were right the entire time it is me. There is something not right. What's going on? And that was the whole mm. kind of start of the whole me accepting that something wasn't right. So I went to the school's uh, therapist and within like a half an hour, I was told I was bipolar. So that was a complete misdiagnosis. Mm. And, you know, things kind of took some turns throughout the year. And, you know, I got kicked out of the dorms because of a of a, a crisis call where i was beat up by a cop oh, but wow. they said i didn't comply with police so i was kicked out of the dorms wow. okay fine whatever let it be but yeah. i somehow made it through college a lot of it was on look for being on the lacrosse team and then at 22 i went to a new doctor i was more honest and he told me i had schizophrenia and i was like i think that more fitting makes yeah. more sense and really i believe that that was the best thing that ever happened to me because then i could finally be treated for the correct illness mm. so i would say i feel the best i could feel right now really oh good good well that's good and it's it's, it's unfortunate that you have to move through those yeah those misdiagnoses and, and things like that you said lacrosse got you through college yes talk us through that was it good to have an outlet yeah it was it was also good to really have a structure 
and somebody really like uh, watching me at all times and making sure that like, you know, I was okay. It was like mm. having kind of somebody like my coach just helping me, just making sure that I'm okay. And a lot of my teammates also making sure that I was okay. Yeah. And all that was like, a, you know, it's like another additional family that you have and everybody, you know, helps each other. Yes. And it's also fun. And a lot of it is, you know, working on playing sports. You have to really have a clear head and a real concentration. And to play your best, you have to really be mentally clear. And I think that really helped a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I would love to really um, tie back into um, what you spoke about there with sport and, and having a structure and stuff. Because especially with all the uncertainty going in the world right now, um, I really think it's important, you know, um, to have structure and, you know, be conscious of the things you're doing and tasks and things, but talk us, um, through the, the symptoms of schizophrenia, just to, to help people kind of understand this a bit more. Okay. Well, um, schizophrenia has three types of symptoms. They're positive, negative, and cognitive. The positive symptoms, they don't actually, they're not like, yay. It's just called they're positive because they're add-ons to your personal behavior. They're like, you know, hearing things and talking to things and seeing things, hallucinations and things like that. Negative symptoms, they take away from your personality. You might become very quiet, very mute, not really talk at all. And it just kind of go maybe catatonic. And then cognitive symptoms are just more like learning changes and maybe just not understanding things that are said to you. And those are the three main different symptoms that you can have when you have schizophrenia. Wow, that's really interesting. I didn't because I think when people hear the term schizophrenia, they often attribute it to, as you said before, like the hallucinations and and seeing things. And do you know? Do you mind asking if I ask where you fall into those categories? Um, I I, I would say the po positive, like very delusional. There's I come up with like uh, fake memories, fake stories, fake things all the time. Wow. I think the difference between when I was younger and now is that I can think of something, something will come through my head, a memory, and I will say, that's not true. That is a delusion. Ignore it. Wow. And that's the difference. When I was younger, I would believe everything. And I would make up more stories and more stories and more stories and believe a multitude of stories that would just be, 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 turn into nonsense. But now it's more like that never happened. Ignore it. Wow. See, because I, I all right. So I, I have this like um, issue with optimism, right? <laughs> I probably see too much of the positive. And then you tell me something like that. And I'm just like, you must be one of the most creative people out there. For good though. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Because what happens, it's like all of a sudden I think like, oh, remember that time that this happened and all that happened over there and we went to do this and we did that and we did this. And I'm like, that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Leave my head. That didn't even happen. Or mm -hmm. a lot of times it comes with like, you know, that deja vu feeling. Yes. That will happen. And I'll be like, I did this. Mm -hmm. And then I'll think, I did this in my past life. And I'm like, the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This never yeah. happened. Stop it. Stop yeah. it. And I'm like, <sighs> you know? Yes. Yes. So it's Weird almost things like, like, just like, yeah, just, it's just like, I get delusional about like things. I'm like, just, just go away already. Just stop. Like, yes. It's just like, yeah, the difference now is that I can, I know when I'm delusional. Totally. You know, totally. I, yeah. At least I really hope I always know. I hope. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, perhaps. But yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> a few things can just uh, slip through the cracks. <laughs> no, for, sure, for sure. I think um, there's always, there's always two sides to, to every coin. Um, and so I've, so I work as a counselor and um, often I'll have clients and, you know, it won't necessarily be schizophrenia but things they're dealing with and all that sort of stuff. And I find that a lot, and I probably have a natural bias to creativity as a filter. And I find that um, people kind of get a lot of relief and therapy from filtering the things that kind of move through their head and be able to, you know, um, use it, um, you know, creative expression, um, like writing, painting, artwork, you know, just a way to kind of perceive the world in their own funny little bubble. Do you use any of that sort of stuff? Or? I don't really know. I, I, I use it when I'm just so bored. It yeah. just keeps me really entertained, mostly. I mean, sometimes I'll just like draw things and get lost in the drawing because I'm so busy talking to myself that I have no idea what I've done. Yes, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. And I look, I mean, I use it for myself too because I, I can kind of relate to that where I'll have 
a thought as I seen pictures and um, this is probably one of the reasons why I struggle with anxiety for so long is because I seen pictures and then that picture will associate itself with a memory and then that with another picture and I just have these kind of what ifs this abstractly represent themselves so quickly before I'm like whoa I was just in a world then and um, writing helps me kind of like you know um, move through that well if that did happen well then let's write about that and, and all that sort of stuff but I think having a an outlet like that, you know, or just some form of way to catch, even like you say, you're like, whoa, I'm, I'm delusional right now, um, can be so helpful. And it sounds to me like that was something that really helped you, um, you know, move from the, the childhood world where it was probably quite frightening and quite scary into something where you can almost kind of laugh at it. Do, do you want to talk us through that? Like, like younger when I was like scared of it. I, yeah. I, I you know what? It, the way it used to be when I was younger, I would come home every night. I was miserable. I was depressed. And at night, I would go completely paranoid, delusional and say, today, when you said that to that person, they thought you were an idiot. And when that person looked at you, she thought you were ugly. And when you were in class, those people behind you, they laughed at you. Wow. Yeah. And it was just horrible things, one after another, one after another, completely, even if things didn't happen, I was making up that they happened and I believed they happened. Mm. I also like believe that my mother was trying to kill me. And I actually, I, I, I had made, I was speaking somewhere recently and I met up with another person. Well, I met up with a woman at, um, after it and she was saying my daughter has schizophrenia and she also i say in the speech like you know i thought my mother was trying to hurt me she goes did you ever accuse your mother of like abuse real abuse and say she really tried to hurt you and it wasn't true and i, I was like i did that exact thing i know exactly wow. what you're talking about and she and she's like my daughter is is saying we did all these horrible things to her that we never did and i'm like yeah i did the exact same thing i Whoa. know exactly what you're talking about you know she needs to just realize somehow that She's making it all up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How do, how do you move into that? Because I just imagine it would be so hard to take yourself out of the jar and see, no, these are made up thoughts, you know, as you say. How, how, how do you get to that stage where you can catch yourself? Like, is it a training? Is it a... It, it's, it's, a tr it's a training and it's also a medication thing. Okay. Because I remember, like when I, I remember not being medicated at all about the age maybe of 22, I was with a few of my friends and something kind of bugged me and something was really making me anxious and I'm hanging out with my friends, but they're here and I was in my head the entire day, not talking to any of them and only talking to myself yeah. because I was so anxious about something. I couldn't stop having delusions about it and I mm. couldn't come, I couldn't be in the world because I couldn't get out of my head too much. So it really, it just takes a long time to learn what is a delusion and maybe find the right medication that helps you learn it. And then also kind of learning patterns, you know, like I said, like when I have the deja vu, then I realized I took me a while to be like, there's no way that I have this much deja vu. Like it's ridiculous how much deja vu I have. Like this yes. doesn't make sense anymore. But it, it just took a, it took a while. I had really just had to learn myself, I guess. I didn't yes. realize I had all these tricks, but apparently I do. Exactly. Well, yeah, see, and then that's the optimist in me that, you know, they're, when we're talking about integrating into society, you know, we want to be able to get along with people and, you know, not kill people at the flip of a hat. And that's something I need to learn myself. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so much of that as well that is our unique ability to see the world in our own incredible way. And I think, part of the reason why I wanted to speak with you is because, um, you know, you've, you've kind of turned this uh, illness and something that you really struggle with growing up into something that is actually a force for good. And part of that force for good, you know, there's, so it's a clothing brand uh, primarily, is that right? Clothing, clothing brand and uh, oh, the mental health clothing brand, it uses the uh, medium of apparel and art to spread awareness. Yes. Awesome. Oh, and art as well. Yes. Oh, cool. Talk us through that. What kind of artwork? Oh, artwork that I've just been working on for a long time. Um, it all comes from a place of anxiety. You can check it out. It's pretty <laughs> <Legend>. awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We'll see that. And that's what I mean. Like you, now you've kind of 
filtered the onus into a creative expression that also brings you money and, and helps other people as well. Because I imagine that you saying to, to the mother, you know, I did those exact things would, would have provided her with a crazy amount of relief. Yeah. Oh, definitely. 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 Yeah. It's crazy. Cause you just think that I just can't imagine what this is like for parents as well, growing up and thinking, well, hang on, you know, I, I was never doing any of that, but they really, really believe that, uh, you know, that we're out to get them and all that sort of stuff. Am I right in saying that schizophrenia is something that's diagnosed around the early twenties? I, I would say, yeah, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And do you know why that is? I'm not totally sure why that is. Sometimes I think it is because at that age, people are kind of starting to just take care of themselves and maybe they just can't do it. Yes. Sometimes I think it's that, but who, who, you know, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not the ex, I'm an expert. True, true. (laughs) That's what I think. You're an expert on your own experience. So that makes sense. Yeah. It probably could be, you know, I mean, these are, these things are obviously multifactorial. And one thing that springs to mind perhaps is, um, you know, university we call it college for you obviously is a time where um as a result you're now really starting to think a lot more about your life and you know there's that process of self-reflection and then as you start to you know descend within things manifest themselves i suppose in a clearer light um Mm -hmm, definitely definitely was the case for me so talk Mm -hmm. us through some um management strategies so for for someone out there that may not necessarily have schizophrenia but might be struggling with similar symptoms or things um, aside from medication, obviously clinical therapy. um, What are some things that you do in day-to-day life that really help manage it? The things that help manage my illness. I really, I, I just try to take it one step at a time, not too many things at once, really organize what I'm doing. So things don't pile up. Like right now I'm looking at my bedroom and I've, I have, too much of a mess and it's making me really anxious. So I wished I would have just done little s- steps because a lot of people, they contact me and they say like, you know, I can't even like leave for a room. I can't do anything. I don't even want to do this. And I'm like, you know, small steps. Mm. If you can't get out of bed, maybe you just get one step out of the bed. Maybe you just go to the door. Maybe one day you just put like some clothes on, just anything to get you going. Mm. Any management that you need to do, is really just up to what you think is right for yourself. Like I said, mm. I there is like you said therapy, there's meds, but talking to your friends, spending time with good people. I don't have any like magical tips, but I think you have to get your know yourself, write mm. things down, keep track of things. If you think you are delusional, call a friend, ask them if these things ever happened. I think that's really helpful. Mm. If you think you're hallucinating, Maybe you should see if you're stressing out about something in particular and if it's making you hallucinate that certain thing. That's really all I can say about that. Yeah. But they're so, they're so powerful, those tips. And they're, they're things that often we, um, you know, kind of push to the wayside because, you know, they're, they're so simplistic, you know, you're talking about mm-hmm. structure and planning and writing things down and taking things one step at a time. I think that's a brilliant, um, you know, a brilliant practice because and it comes down to goals you know i mean you're a business owner you're an entrepreneur you understand this that you know you don't just you don't just click your fingers and you have twenty thousand followers on instagram you have you know worked your way and dug in the trenches and that can be applied to um anything in life if you don't feel like getting out of bed can you lift your legs off the bed can you turn the light on you know just just start with the small steps um i think that's a i think that's a really brilliant response and so I kind of, we kind of come full circle now and um, want to talk now about the uh, entrepreneurial stuff. You mentioned at the beginning that you wanted to start this business in a way to raise awareness. Can you tell us um, kind of the process in that, you know, when the business began and what your first steps were like perhaps? Um, the business began just kind of, just on kind of a, I'm doing this, let's do it. Like I said before, uh, everybody thought I was just kind of, what am I doing? But I another just, delusion. <laughs> another delusion. What is she doing? Who knows what? Yeah. And then I, I just got a spot at a flea market. I made some shirts at a company and yeah. just started making some videos and selling at a flea market. And I got some good responses. And I just kept building things up more and up more. And you know, schizophrenic NYC. If you check it out at schizophrenic.nyc. Absolutely. And it, 
I, I got featured a bunch of places and it's just, you know, led me in some really cool directions. I've met some really awesome people. I've gone to some really awesome conferences and it's really cool. And um, I have t-shirts that, you know, schizophrenic <laughs> NYC, don't be paranoid. You look great. Like the <laughs> silly ones like that, or it's not a delusion. You are incredible. Yeah, that's cool. Or the new I'm mentally ill and I don't kill. But mm -hmm. also I have ones with the Rorschach test on them. And the thing is that I put my, um, artwork in the Rorschach test because when you get a schizophrenic person to look at that test we're going to see it from a different perspective so by putting my artwork in the test you now everyone's forced to look at it through a different perspective so mm. it gets you to think differently and start a discussion because only through discussion can we reduce our end stigma mm. so my, the whole thing is just by wearing the shirt just like let's have that discussion let's yes. talk and what i meet the... people who just have great stories. I just meet people from all over. It's like pop-up shop in New York City. You never know who you're going to meet. And it's really hilarious sometimes. And I've met some amazing people. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's the coolest thing about entrepreneurship is the networking, you know, and the, the lines of communication that you can open. And you were talking about a test there. What, what was that one? The Rorschach test? Yeah. It's an inkblot test. Okay. And um, a lot of psychologists have used it or psychiatrists and therapists. It's just kind of like an inkblot test that you're kind of saying, like, oh, what do you see in this test? And based on certain oh, yes. answers, they'll try to diagnose you in certain ways. Okay. Yes. No, I have seen that. Um, what are some common ways? So, so they see there are kind of different inkblots and things and people, they're asked people to um, see what they see from them. Do you, do you get like really differing results with schizophrenics as opposed to people that don't have that illness? It's not that you get specific differing results. It's just the idea that like when a person with schizophrenia just looks at that or looks through life, you just see things from a different perspective. It's just about looking at things differently. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And this, um, this kind of comes into the analogy that I actually use often um, with uh, the X-Men because I really believe that, you know, you were speaking about society beforehand and you were speaking about how, um, it's so important to get the discussion out there. And, you know, I think we're starting to move to a place in the world where everyone's beginning to recognize that we live within a sea of individuals as opposed to just specific groups. And everyone does have their own unique take on the world, which is so cool because it means that, you know, um, when you look at a test like that, there's no right or wrong. It's just different perspectives and schizophrenics will see it in one way, people without that, but perhaps with something else, neuroticism, we'll see it in another way. And, you know, because now we're all transcending the factory line worker where we all have to do this and that's that. Um, if we can kind of move into a place where, you know, schizophrenics could really be used over here in this sector, you know, and people with high anxiety could really be used in this area where constantly thinking about the future is really beneficial. Have you ever thought about that in terms of like where your entrepreneurial pursuits might take you? Um, I'm one of those people, I, I try not to hope for like really, really huge things because when they don't happen, I get really upset. So I just try <laughs> to enough. just be like, things might go okay. I'm not going to, I'm not, not, not going to try that, you know, because if I, if I don't, if I don't, you know, when you reach for the stars and then you, you don't make it there, it kind of makes you say it. Yes. The fall. That's kind of my thing. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Um, Michelle, it's been so fun to have a chat to you. Yeah, totally. It's been great. Is there one piece of advice, I suppose, that you could give to the listeners now um, that are perhaps moving through some kind of mental illness or they're confused about what's going on? Um, just a bit of advice to, to see them on their merry way. I would just say that, you know, it's just a diagnosis. It's not a life sentence. You're mm. going to be okay. That's awesome. You're very... The way you speak is very, it's very simplistic. So I have a lot of people on the show, right? And people will, I'll, I'll ask them something and then they'll just go for 10 minutes. But I think what I like about you is I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask you a question and you'll just respond. <laughs> and that's it. People say that about me, that I just like, I'm so direct. Yeah, you I'm are like, super direct. I'm a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. Yeah. That's how we are. That's what workers do. That's awesome. No time to fuck around. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. I think us Australians <laughs> could probably learn a thing or two from you guys. That's probably. Pretty I thought important. the Australians like like they they talk in like half a sentence. Every word is half a word. It's true. Right? You said the word selfie. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. We get so lazy. We probably just shorten that to s. <laughs> just get so, we're just so lazy down here. It's bizarre. I don't even know it with myself. Like I just shorten really? words because I just can't be fucked. It's bizarre. <laughs> I want to live in Australia. You, you should don't come have down. Trump. You don't even have Trump. I know, I know flights right now are cheap. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you could come, you would. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm in New York. If you fly, if you come from New York or fly out of New York anywhere, you have to go into like two weeks of quarantine. Oh, it's insane. Hey, we're in the hot zone. Yes. Yes. I do love New York. I've been to New York twice. I love it. It's really beautiful. Like six weeks ago, Mm -hmm. I got incredibly sick. Did you? Like incredibly sick. And I Um, never get sick. I think think I had Corona. I think I had it. I think I did. I never get sick and I was dying. Really? Is it I just like totally the flu on steroids or something, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, I even, I went to like the urgent care lady who oh, was yeah. like, she was like, I think you have the flu. We don't have to do the flu test. I'm pretty sure you have the flu. And mm. I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause it would, I mean, even six weeks ago, cause these things going so quickly. I yeah, don't think anyone was, was even, here. Yeah. 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 I, the fact that I never get sick and I was that sick. Totally. Totally. I yeah. totally already had it. I had it. I know you that. probably I had it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Totally and what's, what's funny is that actually the biggest place in New York that first was blowing up with coronavirus was my hometown where my parents live. Oh, really? So like, like I'm Jewish, right? But this, but my, I'm not Orthodox. I'm not very religious. And like, but in my town, there's this religious temple and some man there went to synagogue with coronavirus oh, wow. and infected the entire temple. And the rabbi, so the temple became a hot zone, oh my and God. a one-mile radius around the temple no way. became a, like a danger zone, and that's where all these Orthodox Jews live. So I, Trump on TV was like, "I grew up very close to New Rochelle." We're like, "Fuck you, you asshole!" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you. So everyone's, I'm getting texts from people like, "Are your parents okay?" Totally. And then my mom's calling me. She's like. Oh yeah, everybody's texting us asking if we're okay. Yeah, like we're fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then, like, yeah, the governor is like at the thing is like the the temple is now like like where they're testing everybody. Everybody's going to the temple oh. and getting. And oh the governor's God. at the temple, so the Jews can't like celebrate Purim and they can't celebrate Passover. And they can't go to temple anymore. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow. So- Hilarious. So they've have they turned the synagogue into kind of like an epicenter or like a a testing facility. Kind oh of. Oh my yeah. God. Wow. Is that in Long Island? It's in Westchester. Westchester. How, where is that in relation to Manhattan? Right, it, right above the Bronx. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. So that's a big Jewish area up there. Well, I mean, all around right. New York City is a big Jewish area. Yes, yes, yes. I thought so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I read a book. I was, I was reading Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. He was talking about the, the big Jewish influx that led to all the lawyers in the 20th century. And um, there's a lot of like Jewish history there. It's pretty incredible. Oh, there's tons. There's tons. They just built the new Auschwitz Museum. Oh, yes. Good. Destroyed on 9-11. Oh, no shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good point. Wow. Yeah. See, that was yeah, something that I really wanted to see. Because um, when I went there the second time, they were still building the, um, the other, was it Tower One, the main one? The Freedom Tower? The Freedom Tower, sorry. Yes, the Freedom Tower. I think that was still being built um, when I went there. So I'll have to come back. <laughs> oh, it's, it's breathtaking. Yeah. The pools, it's like two big square pools and it's just waterfalls. Yeah. It's breathtaking. It's yeah, amazing. it's good. It's good. It's, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously it's not good that it happened, but it's good to have a memorial there for that. And yeah. Well, Michelle, look, thank you. We can, I okay. think we could talk for a long time. I love the simplistic, yeah. direct way you respond. So it's probably just me talking the whole time, but I got the answers. <laughs> okay, great. cool. Um, hey, where can people find you? Um, talk to us about your website and um, anything new that's coming out in the business. Um, okay. Well, my business, uh, Schizophrenic NYC, you can find it at Schizophrenic NYC, Instagram, Schizophrenic NYC, um, mental health clothing brand. Um, check it out. Cool. <laughs> Legend. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye. <laughs> I was trying to do some of that direct response in there. It didn't, didn't come off the best. I need, I need to live okay. in New York, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Bye.